and very excited about our next guest. You know him as Uncle Neely. You're very familiar with the pregame show. New media making its way up to Boulder and kind enough to give us a few minutes of his time. Uncle Neely, what's going on, my man? Welcome to Mile High Sports Radio. Man, glad to be here, brother. How you feeling today? Man, I am great. Every every Thursday from noon to one, I was telling the guys before the show started, this is just fun. Talking all things buffs. We're talking basketball as well with what's going on up there. Uh, but happy to have you on the show. And, and I want to start with your background in particular before we dive into what's happening on the gridiron right now. How did you get into this new media game? Because Chase and I were talking about it in the last segment. Like, one of the great things about this Colorado Buffaloes program right now since Coach Prime came over is – yourself the pregame show you know it feels like with what Dion jr is doing as well like you're really getting that behind the scenes all ex- all inclusive kind of access with this program so first and foremost thank you so much for a few minutes and what has kind of been your journey to get to this point because the content you're putting out with the pregame show is absolutely premium my friend well i appreciate that man appreciate the compliment and the kudos you know it's a uh, effort of love and it, it started at jackson state i was part of a group of guys uh, doing just a fan show about Jackson State athletics. Uh, Coach Prime arrived in Jackson State, got to meet him and work with him, and uh, helped with making Shadur Sanders uh, uh, tr- his, you know, he was going to a school in Florida, and then he flipped to Jackson State, so helped him making his transition, you know, and moving there of ease. And one day out of the blue, you know, I get a phone call from the one and only Deion Sanders. I had no idea he was watching my content. Uh, and he said, man, you know, you do a sports show on Saturdays for the games. When I get home on Sundays, I watch it. I love what you're doing. But here's what we're going to do from this moment forward. We're going to bring it inside so you're not just talking about what you think is going on in Jackson State football. Jackson State football. It's what you it's think. What it's what you know is taking place. So, um, and that happened spring of 2021. We had that COVID football season, and we've been joined at the hip ever since. And uh, it's built on trust. He, he knows I know what to show, what not to show, and have a relationship with the players. And so since we've been here now for, man, 11 months, can you believe December will be a year since he was announced? Uh, and so it's just been wonderful, man, to show this market space, Pac-12, and you know, then moving to the Big 12, what goes on really day-to-day behind the scenes in the Deion Sanders Coach Prime uh, organization. What's up, Neely? This is Chase. Okay, so – Coach Prime ends up taking the job in Boulder. What was the decision-making process like? What was the conversation you might have had with Coach Prime on being willing to come to Boulder? And how tough of a decision was that to kind of turn your focus towards Colorado? I know you stay in touch with Jackson State and you love it. It's your alma mater. But what was the decision like to to focus a little bit more on the buffs? Well, I'm going to give you the, the punchline at the end of it first. It was an easy decision. Uh, what happened when Coach Prime was was named head coach uh, for Colorado, we still had a bowl game to play at Jackson State. So in between the SWAC championship and that bowl game, he said, hey, Neely, look, don't make a decision right now. Just take – got to go out there for a few days. Just take a trip with me. See how you like it. Kick the tires. Get the vibe. And we'll go from there. Well, seeing is believing. You know, it doesn't take long to be in Boulder or Colorado and fall in love with it. So – saw the facilities, saw all the things that he had planned that was going to be working on, and, man, it was an easy decision, you know, to help him in that transition phase between, say, December and March when we got really ready for spring ball. But, you know, we didn't have an offseason. We hit the ground running because it was a, a new administration and just had to look back since then, man. You know, just love being here, love covering this program. Uh, you know, still watch my Jackson State Tigers when I can. Uh, sometimes they're playing in the afternoons and we're playing at night. So that's my school where I graduated from and love it. Uh, but the pregame show has been just totally immersed in Colorado football uh, since December. Well, it's a good point you bring up because when you bring in Coach Prime, odds are you're playing in prime time. So you get the opportunity to see everything else <laughs> that's going on uh, in the college football slate. But w- what has that transition been like for you? I mean, I've been like, we're, we're having conversations here at the studio. Like, what's the bigger story? Is it the Nuggets winning their first championship or is it everything that Coach Prime is doing in Boulder? I mean, what has it been kind of like just documenting, being behind the scenes? Right, I think back to the opening press conference where he talks about, you know, he's a Texas boy now living out here in the country in Colorado with the Florida roots, of course, as well. What has the transition been like, not just for yourself, but watching Coach Prime and company, you know, bring this thing to life up here in Boulder? Excellent question. Love the way you frame that. It has been like watching the second part of your favorite movie. You know, I don't care if it's The Matrix, The Godfather, The Hangover. You know, you know the characters. 
you know the storyline, and you're just ready to see what's next. Because B did all this, you know, at Jackson State. He inherited a program that traditionally over past decades was a powerhouse, but over more recent decades had fallen off and uh, went through that spring season, you know, pretty much the same record as now, and he made the same announcement, you know, to the SWAC then, you better get me now because you won't get me later. And seeing what he is doing here and turning this 111 program now to a four-win program and looking to get these last two on the road, I can tell you guys the punchline at the end of the movie is going to go just like it went before. You better get him now because you're not getting him, you know, when he gets all his pieces in place. So to be here and witness the excitement that takes place in Boulder and in Denver and Colorado and around the Pac-12, you know, I lean against the wall and I smile because I've seen the fan excitement before. I've seen the media attention before. And I can tell you guys that we have not even started this journey yet here in Colorado. There's going to be so much more to come uh, that it's going to eclipse for years any sports story that's taking place in this area. All right, so that was a beautiful buildup, but a lot of the discussion this week, I'm seeing Stephen A. Smith talk about Texas A&M. Every job opportunity that's going to become available in college football, I think Coach Prime will probably be mentioned. Why or why not? Why, why do you think he's going to stay? Why do you think he wants to keep building this thing? Uh, he loves it here, man. And again, rewinding back, we went through the same thing you know, I give you that movie analogy. I've seen this story before. We went through the same thing at Jackson State. Every time there was a job opening, who doesn't want or the rumor mill is not going to be the hottest coach in America, which will always be Deion Sanders. So he's going to be in every rumor mill of any big-time program. Uh, we went through it for three seasons. I think the same thing is going to happen here, whether it's the Texas A&M or any other job opening. People are going to be mentioning that he's the top candidate for it. Uh, however, much like at Jackson State, he's not a guy that pulls up before the mission is done. Uh, he says what he says he's going to do. He came into Jackson State and said, look, man, you know, three seasons without a doubt, you know, we had that COVID season. And when you hear him talk about his love and what he's doing here in Boulder, I just don't see it happening, man. He, he, he talks about getting another home here. He talks about how not going back to Texas so much in the offseason. He literally loves being here, you know, in this community at this school. Uh, and he knows that the work is not done here. You look what happened this first season. Uh, it's not what he wanted, not what anybody expected of us. Uh, so he's coming back next year. Shadour is coming back next year. Travis is coming back next year. Stylo is coming back next year. Uh, you're going to see this over again, regardless of what jobs uh, open up on the market. Yeah, and, and, you know, Chase and I have talked about this at large in years past. Like, it was we were waiting on somebody like a coach prime to come here and realize all that Boulder is because the, the conversation previously had been like, all you got to do is get the recruits to Boulder and they don't want to leave because you see the mountains, you see the weather, you see the atmosphere. Folsom Field is incredible, right? And it's been awesome to see Coach Prime put it all together. Now, I do want to ask you about some of the recent struggles, though. They haven't won a game since early October. I believe a sure. four-game losing streak that they're currently riding, but experience is the best teacher in life, right? And this is year one of you know a multi-phase type of project here for Coach Prime. How do you think they're handling losing and not letting it be the end-all, be-all and bring them down, but using these losses and using these experiences as a means to build for the future? Well, you get in the film room and you really deep dive into the loss. And one thing I can tell you and the fan base that's out there listening, the lovers or the haters, whoever is interested for whatever reason, when you look at who we have played and the margin of error, the gap between the win or the loss, you know, here we are, man, only Oregon whooped us. You know, we just got flat out beat by Oregon. And Oregon is right there, you know, looking like they can ease into the top four to go for a national championship. Everyone else that we played that have been ranked, we were either leading the game or could have won the game. You look at this past game against Oregon State. I mean, the only time they led is when they kicked the field goal uh, at the end and they're number 11 in the nation. If that doesn't show you where this program is headed, you know, you talk about the losing streak right now. We started this season with a three-game winning streak, something that hadn't been done in years. Uh, and then even the losing streak pales in comparison to last year's losing streak. The arrow is absolutely pointing up because we're competitive in these games. We have an opportunity to win these games. We're not just getting blown out by 28 and 30 points. You're talking about Vegas hates us because we're killing the spread, man. Like, we, we always overperform in that regard. And when you look at the defense, guys, you talk about, again, the Oregon State. Two plays were over 100 yards. 
you take those 100 yards off the boards or even cut them in half and the penalties that extended drives, you're talking about an Alabama or a Georgia defense statistically. All we've got to do on this end is learn how to finish, learn how to win, to play with the same intensity and attention to detail the last five minutes of the game as you do the first five, and you're talking about a 7, 8, 9, 10 win team next year. Neely, I know you have to catch a ride here soon, so I want to ask you this question. Last one from me. You don't make it a secret that you like your food. I'm wondering, is there a bolder spot other than that cafeteria they got in the Champion Center? Is there a bolder spot that you've enjoyed uh, over the last few months? Man, I have been making my way around to Boulder and Denver. You know, uh, Coach Prime coined the phrase years ago that Neely don't miss no meal. Uh, and so I'm always looking for a good spot. I have not found a favorite, but I'm loving, uh, you know, these local spots that have been open 30, 40, 50, 70 years where you just get the local vibe of what the Buffaloes have been eating traditionally. You know, whether it's the Dark Horse or the Sink, I'm a hamburger guy, so I love a good burger, man. But it, it's been a pleasure to be here and get to know folks. And uh, when you walk in places, they're familiar with the program and, and all that kind of stuff. So I love the food and love the atmosphere, man. One thing about it, I don't think there's a, a food that's just unique to Boulder. You know, it's such a melting pot of people coming in for education here uh, that you get all kinds of uh, vibe and flair. So it's a nice place to be. Well, I'll tell you this. When Chase is uh, back to 100% and when the, the you know, everything, the pomp and circumstance slows down with everything up in Boulder, we'll, uh, we'll take you out here down in Denver. We'll show you some really good local spots as well because the food scene hey. between here and Boulder, I'm a foodie through and through. Like, I'm a recovering fat kid from when I was younger. Like, I love to munch. I love to eat. So we could absolutely chop it up, talk some buffs. And I show you some of the local spots as well. But uh, before we cut you loose, Unc, what do you want to promo? I mean, what what you're doing with the pregame show is absolutely fantastic. We talked about how it's new media. What are your plans for the future? What do you got coming down the line? And, and what what's kind of your overall aspiration uh, with your personal brand, but also the pregame show? What's coming down the line? You know, man, to just keep going. First of all, I want to thank everybody. You know, since getting here, we have reached 100,000 subscribers on the pregame show channel on YouTube. That's T-H-E-E, pregame show, so please go subscribe. And we do have something coming. I sat down with Coach Prime the other day, and he was excited that we reached 100,000, but he put this challenge out, guys. He said if we get to 121,000, he's going to sit down on the pregame show network for 21 minutes with Coach Prime and live with the asker of the questions on the screen with him take questions live over YouTube uh, on our platform. So our next mission, man, is to push to 21,000 so we can start that regular series of 21 minutes with Coach Prime. Uh, but just, man, I just want to express thanks to everybody for hopping on board. Uh, we love what we're doing, love the reaction from it, uh, whether we're bumping into parents at game or friends, or alumni around the country. You know, everyone is loving this, you know, this look inside the program with deep dive interviews. So, our goal is to keep it going, keep it growing. Want to add other content to the channel, you know, to cover, you know, whether it's a Colorado life or Buffalo life, you know, just to keep expanding and growing, man. That's the mission for 2024. But the first thing is to finish these last two games and let's go 2-0 and to close out the season. And Love then we'll get a bowl game. Love it. We'll keep an eye on that. It's a mission, not a show. And you're doing a fantastic job with everything that's going on over there with the pregame show on YouTube. Uncle Neely, thank you so much for a few minutes of your time. Safe travels. Good luck with everything the rest of this year. And we'll be sure to connect. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, fam. Yes, sir. That was, look, I love Adam Monster Tiger. I love Adam Monster Tiger. And we learn a lot with Adam Monster Tiger. That makes me want to go hop on the football field myself and play for the Buffs, to be honest with you. What, what an interview that was, huh, Chase? That was fun. I, that was that was sick, man. And, and I, I know you and I are kind of media nerds. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people, like, nerd out about, like, ooh, like, this reporter or that person or this content, right? But, like, when I saw him and what he was doing, man, he is changing the game. And I love that Dion and company have been so receptive to it. So, uh, great interview with Uncle Neely. We'll be sure to put that out once again on social media. Probably upload it to YouTube as well. Uh, and away we go. But let's hit a break. When we come back, let's uh, talk about those Colorado Buffaloes. As Uncle Neely said, two more wins. Looks like you might be uh, in line for a potential bowl game. Let's talk about CU and Washington State, all things buffs. When we come back right here on the other side, it is the SCO Show. AP Chase Howell, Danny Bailey, back in a few 